just building on that, Rupert, um, if I understand it, awareness is focused in the present, in the, um, in the waking state, and hazy in the dream state, and unfocused in the deep sleep state. I'm just wondering, what happens to awareness in Turiya, or when we die? <laughs> because from what we've said, it's always ever-present, it's always pure. You see that the... The body is an image in the finite mind. And the finite mind is a localization of infinite consciousness. I'll say that again. The body is an image in the mind. R right now, when I, when I say the mind now, I mean the mind in the broadest sense of the word. The body is a, 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 a mixture of images, sensations and perceptions which appear in the mind. Yeah, all you know of your body now is the image of it and the sensation of it that appears in your mind. So the body, the body is an image in the mind, but the mind itself is a, is a contraction or a localization of consciousness. So if you imagine infinite consciousness, the nature of consciousness is infinite. Now, it's not possible for infinite consciousness to know a finite object. Yes? Because if, imagine infinite consciousness like an infinite space. And now imagine a little finite object appearing in that space. That finite object would displace a little bit of consciousness's infiniteness. And therefore consciousness would no longer be infinite. It would be finite. So it's not possible for infinite consciousness to know a finite object. In order to know a finite object, infinite consciousness must seem to cease being infinite and become finite. Infinite consciousness be must become the finite mind. It's only as a finite mind that consciousness can know the world. That is why in deep sleep we don't know the world, because consciousness has totally defocused, it has let go of all its association with the mind and the body, it's gone back to itself, and it is infinite consciousness knowing its own being alone. In order to know something other than its own being, consciousness must, as it were, cease looking at itself, cease knowing itself as it is, and become a finite mind. Now, how does it become a finite mind? It identifies itself with a form. It, it simultaneously creates and identifies itself with a form. It is this mixture of consciousness plus form that creates the finite mind, or consciousness plus the body creates the finite mind. It is only as that finite mind that we can know a world. That is why even when we have a dream, the dreamed world is always seen from the point of view of a dreamed person. Yes, if you're walking down the streets of London, if, if the streets of London appear to you in your dream, you are one of the people on the street, and the street that you see is seen from the point of view of the person. So in order for a dreamed world to appear in consciousness, consciousness has to appear to locate itself as the dreamed person. It's only from the point of view of the dreamed person that consciousness sees the dreamed world. Likewise, now, it's only from the point of view of the body that consciousness is seeing a room. And consciousness has to seem to limit itself as a form, as a separate subject, in order to know a separate object. But in order to know itself, it doesn't need to identify itself with the body. It knows itself by itself. So in Turiya, Turiya is just the experience of consciousness knowing its own being without 
needing to take the form of the finite mind. Indeed, once consciousness takes the form of the finite mind, it cannot know itself as it is. Because just as the infinite consciousness cannot know a finite object, so a finite mind cannot know infinite consciousness. If consciousness wants to know the world, it has to focus, it has to narrow its vision. It has to assume the position of the body, and it is only as that body-based consciousness that it can know the world. But in order to know itself, it has to gradually relax the focus of its attention. Let all those limitations drop away until there is nothing limiting itself. That is the experience of Turiya, or just the simple knowing of our own being, consciousness knowing itself, without the agency of a finite mind. that's the same as what happens after the body dies? Yes, when, when, when the body dies, remember the body is an appearance in the mind. Yes. So when the, when the body dies, it just a particular localization of consciousness disperses. Your, your finite mind is a localization of consciousness. When the localization dissolves, the consciousness doesn't dissolve. As, as a friend of mine, Bernardo Castro, put it, he, he said the finite mind is like a whirlpool in a stream. All there is to the whirlpool is water. When the body dies, the whirlpool dissolves. But nothing disappears, because all there is to the whirlpool is water. The water remains, but it's no longer, it, it no longer precipitates in the form of the body-mind. Yes. So the mind is like a precipitation or like a whirlpool. Yes. It's a localization of consciousness. And the body and the world appear in that localization. <coughs> When the body disappears, that localization disperses. However, as the, as the localization disperses, its contents are still in consciousness. So there's no reason why another localization shouldn't form that contain the elements of the previously dispersed whirlpool, which would explain why the why there could be, it, for instance, it could explain successive lives. They're not successive lives, they're successive precipitations of finite minds. And there's no reason why the residue of one finite mind, as it disperses into the stream, shouldn't take the form of another whirlpool or another finite mind. So it, it, this could explain how, uh, how uh, what is normally considered to be the theory of reincarnation. A theory of reincarnation that has nothing to do with bodies, physical bodies being born and dying. No, physical bodies never come into existence. We never go, we never go further down from consciousness and mind. We never go down to matter. <laughs> Everything we know of matter, that is the body and the world, is an appearance in the mind, in the finite mind. Consciousness precipitates as the finite mind and appears as the body and the world. And then it, when it relaxes, it ceases to be the finite mind, the body and the world disappear. And then it, as it focuses again, the body and the mind come into existence. And this, this successive contraction and relaxation, it, it happens on different timescales. It happens every time a perception comes to an end. There is this momentary relaxation and contraction. It happens every 24 hours when we fall asleep. It happens on a bigger scale when we die and when we're born. They're just different, different lifespans, different time scales for this same process of consciousness contracting or localizing and relaxing. Localizing 
and relaxing. As it localizes, the body and the world come into existence. As it relaxes, it goes out of existence. Very interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed very interesting. <laughs>